Right guys, and welcome down to the Monday Night Golf Show question and answer. So every week we post questions to you guys on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. We try and get them out there in every format and then answer them in this segment of the show. Hopefully you've already enjoyed the roundup of the weekend's action and Charles Forshaw's swing analysis. And now we are going to delve into answering the questions that you want to have answered yes and we've had we, we were so ha happy with the response straight from the from the off monday night golf show obviously we've got now splitting up into trilogies and we have got a new quest golf channel facebook uh, facebook page so go and like that because that's where we're going to pick these first questions from and then we're going to jump over to the to the post that pete shared as well because he's had some questions on there as well um and we see a familiar face at the top of this list uh, gordon o'reardon hello gordon again good Friendly to show. good to uh, finally get a uh, Interacting with you again because it's been a while since we've done the Monday Night Golf Show. Um, is the Open still within reach for you? That's what I put. Yeah. Yeah. What areas do you both need to address and should you have done anything differently? And will you try again if you fail? So this is our, relating to our project between Quest for the Open, myself and Pete are trying to qualify for the Open next year. Um, qualifying stages happen in around June. So it's a bit too early to write us off just yet. Um, and then, would, would you have done anything differently? Oh my God, I'm not even 2016 yet. So uh, if you're not familiar with the actual format, the, the regional qualifying event is the first actual open event that we're going to be playing in. And that's normally middle to end of June. It's at a golf course that is our selection, somewhere located in the UK. Um, and we probably get a couple of options, so we'll let you know as soon as those come out. I believe the entry forms come out of them in January. Yeah, it's, when they say it's our selection, the RNA pick <laughs> a load of courses and then we get to choose from no, that. No, no, we, no. we don't, we don't the give picture. the RNA the course that we want to play. <laughs> We're just going to the pitch and put. <laughs> so <laughs> we might struggle around there, to be fair. Um, yeah, so there's selected courses around the, re around the area, around the UK that we can select from. Um, but entry form for that is January, so you're gonna be updated from that. Then it's one round of golf, 120 golfers, you've gotta get in the top seven to go through to the next round, and next round is final qualifying. And we've, we've heard mixed ideas around what final qualifying is this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm still pretty sure they're gonna do it- um, Close to true. Close to true, uh, but it might be changing slightly, but we need to kind of find this out. Is um, that, we've not done anything yet. So from, what should we do? differently um if we were to look at right now we need to practice more we need to play more uh, the weather's gone really awful here but that should be no excuse we need to really knuckle down and get some practice our schedule becomes a little bit less manic because we move into the winter months so we'll have a bit more time to practice and then definitely pushing into next year we're going to push it so hard it's fun true yeah. um so at the moment there's nothing that is, is it still within reach yes because nothing has changed uh I've, we feel very, very happy with our progress so far getting back into competitive golf it's just that we need to break through that that we need to start winning these pga events locally yeah, i believe absolutely. to really start to push the flesh it's winning those and it's just i think for both of us at the moment because obviously opening this new studio because of the different projects we're involved in at the moment it's just planning our schedule a little bit better so we have the time to practice and, and actually play because at the moment we kind of moved over from uh trafford where we were doing lots and lots of coaching and it's kind of been replaced with lots and lots of filming and other things like photo shoots which are obviously very new to us and we need to figure out how best to kind of manage our time a little bit better. But as always, we absolutely love your support. Every time we put a Quest for the Open video out, your support and love is just amazing. It really spurs us on to really keep improving and getting better. Um, Robin Greener, hi guys. So what are your thoughts on how to speed up golf? Whew, uh, I've got a good one on this. I, I, I think, I think a it does need speeded up. Yeah, a, a, lot really of, do. a lot of people, I think playing maybe, there's, there's stuff that's talked about all the time. Not playing in four balls, maybe keeping it at three balls. Not having an over expectation of the shots you can perform. It does get a little bit annoying when you stood on a fairway and someone's on, well, stood on a tee, someone's in the fairway, waiting for a green to clear 320 yards away. They have a three iron in the hand and it's into wind. That gets a little bit frustrating. It really, really does at times. So stuff like that, playing a professional ball when the first one might be lost, getting ready for your shot when the other person is actually playing theirs and not waiting for them to play. There's loads of different things. So I, on that note, I think the, the one big thing, and it's something that absolutely needs to be brought in, is ready golf. I don't know if that's the proper title, but not worrying about whose honor it is. 
not playing from the factor who's furthest away from the hole. As soon as you're ready, play. As soon as you get to the tee, tee off and play. Because otherwise, it, it, that's, that for me is the slow part of it, waiting for that, that order of play. Now obviously it's part of the etiquette and it's, you know, it's in match play, I would still definitely say it's important. But in general play, just when you're ready, just hit. You know, if you get to the tee first, just tee it up and hit. I think that will really speed up the game of golf. Uh, and also just daft things like putting your trolley in the right place, putting it on the right side. But I don't think that's always the golfer's responsibility. I think it's the golf course's responsibility. If they made very visible, clear pathways off greens onto the next tees and said, no, this is the way you put your trolley, even do like a, a trolley car park by the side of the green, ready for the next tee, I think that'll make things a lot easier. You're such a city boy. You just want to put a car park everywhere, there don't you? Go. You just want to tarmac everything. <laughs> uh, Adam Shields, our friend from Down Under, uh, spelt with a D. What would you say to your average social golfer that always struggles to get a good start? Uh, hashtag quest to single figures, hashtag Monday Night Golf Show. Uh, so very excited to see all the amazing content you guys will put up on the Quest channel. Keep up the great work. Guys, thank you very much, Adam. Um, on that note, yes, lots and lots of exciting content will be coming on the Quest Golf channel without question. Um, what would you say to an average social golfer that always struggles to get a good start? Oh. Now, I would say, and this might be blanketing a few average golfers, that the average golfer just doesn't prepare before they go out and play. The average social golfer, which is the question you've asked, they just don't prep, they don't get ready. They, they'd rather be sat in the clubhouse, drinking a coffee, eating a bacon balm, than actually doing something constructive with that time as they arrive to the golf course. Yeah, so it's not like that, it's making time so you can arrive earlier as well, which is very easy, it's more, it's, it's so easy to say, not as easy well, to actually do in practice, that. you know, get into the club with plenty of time to spare so you can warm up properly, have a bit of a practice as well. But it, it's difficult because if you're a social golfer, by that I'm taking, you're only practicing and only playing when you're booked your tee time and when you've got out to play. So you're not spending kind of hours in the week actually practicing. But if you really want to get ready and you really want to get better. But don't forget, I'll just put here quest to single figures. Yeah. So, so if you're really taking it serious. So if you're really taking it seriously, like us, you've got to make that time during the week to actually practice. You, you won't be able. Just like us. Yes, yeah, you won't. You won't, <laughs> you won't. You won't be able to improve. We know this. You won't be able to improve unless you have that kind of time to practice, unless you put the, put the work in. There's no real shortcuts in golf, unfortunately. So with regards to getting off to a good start, I would get to the golf course, at least give yourself half an hour of practice warm up time. Uh, divvy that up between full shots, putting, chipping, pitching and then some more full shots before you actually tee off and you'll be ready and you'll be good to go. So Adam, good luck with your quest for single figures. Uh, and also guys, if any of you've got quests, any, any of you've got um, things that you're aiming for, we have got a blank canvas here that we would love to fill with your memorabilia. So we're going to put a, a address down in the link below and if you've got any quests or challenges or anything that you're trying to accomplish with your golf, send the picture in, we'll draw on it or you draw on it and we'll stick it on this lovely wall ready for the Monday Night Golf Show each week. Uh, Andy Davis, hashtag Monday Night Golf Show. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to hear that again. Yeah, it's nice. Missed, I, I do like that. I've missed hashtag. It's like hashtag. Hashtag Monday Night Golf Show. Is it better when starting out to go to a pro to learn or get some time under your belt so when you get there something so when you get there there's something to work with um, uh, we might have uh, um, you answer first we might have different thoughts on this I, I would always go along the lines of try and get to a pro as soon as possible I always I always believe and I know Rick is slightly different with this I always believe that if you were to start something brand new today so a new skill whatever it might be if you get the foundations in place early enough, the chances of flourishing sooner are going to be a lot greater. Um, but having said that, I know from personal experience, I know Rick from personal experience as well, sometimes you get people in who literally have never held a club in and just can't make contact with the ball. Um, and that can be a little bit kind of frustrating for them and they might not learn kind of super quick. But I would always err on the side of having lessons straight away as soon as you can so you can get the foundations in place. I would definitely advocate having lessons without question. Obviously we're golf coaches, that's what we do. We coach golfers of all different levels and, and you know, there's so many amazing golf coaches around the world. Mostly however, 11. <laughs> however, I feel there is 
some responsibility to the golfer just to go out and learn a little bit first. I always find the, the most success with a golfer who is who has sampled it, maybe been to the driving range, maybe played a couple of holes or with friends or casually, and then come for lessons. I feel like they've got that little bit of awareness of at least making contact and, and knowing what the game is a little bit about and, and almost to a, to a point knowing what they've got to work on. So they may see that their game compared to someone else that they've played with is different in certain aspects and therefore we've got something to work on. So there's a bit more meat on the bones to actually kind of work uh, with and around and, and to get better from that. I don't believe there's a right and wrong. I really don't, and I'm guessing, Andy, with you commenting on this, I'm guessing you've played a little bit already because I'd be surprised if you've jumped on the Quest Golf Channel and not played a bit already. Um, but yeah, get to driving range, play a few holes, then have lessons, but I w without question, the thing that we are in agreement with is coaching is the way forward. Find a good coach, or even group classes when you're a first golfer. I think group classes are great because you can kind of pitch yourself up against other golfers. Sometimes when we'll get a new golfer in and they're hitting it amazing, we're like, you know, that's really good. You're hitting it amazing, that's really good, but they don't actually quite realize how good it is. You know, so pitching yourself up against other golfers of similar standard helps. Would you agree, disagree? Yeah, I'd say so. I think in reality, most people who come in for lessons will have played even a little bit to begin mm. with. Yeah. Um, but So we kind of had that front pit, but yeah, definitely try and get coaching as soon as possible so you're on the right path. So we'll jump over to my uh, Facebook page. And but what, what we're gonna do, make questions. sure you, you like the Quest Golf Facebook page, because that's where we're gonna be getting all of the answers, the questions from in the future. Yeah, make sure you, you like ours as well. I mean, you know, yeah, you can do. I mean, you know, no, 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 you have, you have to. I'm yeah, not you have to. You have to. Instagram, yeah. is I, I care. Instagram is better. Instagram is better. Check actually, us out yeah. on Instagram. Actually, forget everything we just said. <laughs> just go to Instagram. Make sure you follow us on that. That would be great. <laughs> Appreciate that, guys. Right. So, now, Facebook. Uh, you shared this, didn't you, on your Facebook? So, uh, I did. Yes. Questions. Uh, so, Ryan Burnett, uh, if you could play any hole in the world, uh, which hole would it be? Ooh, any I've got hole. Two. Any individual hole. I've got two, and they're very contrasting holes. So I've got 13th of Augusta, okay. the par five, big sweeping dog leg, right to left, obviously, draw the ball, just love it. It just like excites me, that. And the fact that I, that shot into the green is just amazing. So that, that would be one of the ones that Assuming you found the fairway. Come on. If I've played it once, I'm making sure I hit plenty of positions. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what I score. I was shooting at 25 on that one, I don't really care. Um, that one, but then a complete and utter spin on it, which is an, a, a course that we may get chance to play, is 17th at Sawgrass. Mm -hmm. um, I just think the idea it's around very iconic, pretty cool, isn't it? Isn't it? It's yeah. very iconic hole. Um, it was going to be the one hole, I would play the 19th hole uh, down in oh, South wow, Africa. Wow, yes! Please put this down there. I will, I will get a picture of if you've not seen it, if you've not seen the video, it's uh, yeah, I do. We'll put a link hole. in the description. There's a video of that whole way. You actually, not giving too much away, but you get a helicopter to the tee. That, that gives quite a lot away, really. <laughs> I don't think it does. I don't think it does. It gives so much away. <laughs> so yeah, there, there are picks. What are your picks, guys? Comment down below. What would you? What course would you love to play? Oh, sorry, not course. One hole. One not hole you get to play. Too much away. Uh, uh, not. A question here, uh, Carl Broadbent, about a um, young YouTuber, Carl Phillips, uh, who's a very good player, talking about his club head speed. At we like your stuff, Carl, if you're watching. 120 miles an hour at 14. Um, he's obviously a very good player, and the thought is we'd actually love to kind of have a game with him if the chance becomes available, and I'm sure it will do in the future. We hope. Uh, Adam Shields again. Um, the same question. Is that the same? Yeah. What do you, what do you say to your average social golfer? You oh, I was sure to get a good start. Answered. Adam. Seriously, I oh, mean, we, you know, we've got it. Good. I mean, we've got it. He's got it covered. We've got it. Um, you, you, you one away from a ban. <laughs> oh. One away. <laughs> You're not Adam. <laughs> uh, Tony Hall, what has been the best and worst thing for both Rick and Pete? Hello. Uh, regarding your relocation to Lytham from Trafford. Um, so I would say Rick and Pete would say that it was a fantastic move. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would say Rick and Pete are pretty uh, unanimous in their decision about kind of coming over here. It's been fantastic since we've we've been here. We're so happy about the studio and how it's looking, and we've you know had chance to meet quite a few of you. On that note. We have got our Christmas offers up at the moment. I'll leave the link in the description below to the Quest website. I'm not going to get too silly, but we do have lesson packages available. 
and <laughs> online lessons as well. Coming very soon. Yeah, so Tony, it's been a, it's been an awesome move for Rick and Pete. Uh, Rick and Pete are incredibly happy with what they've done here at Lytham and Rick and Pete would invite any golfer, certainly you Tony, to this fantastic Quest Golf Studio where, uh, studio where Rick and Pete actually coach. I think Rick and Pete would probably be uncomfortable with <laughs> other people referring to them in the third person while they're sat here talking. It's kind of an infinite loop there somewhere. Uh, so Rick and Pete should probably move on. And the next question is from David Henson. Struggling with my driver having to aim so far left for it to come back. Is there a fix I can work on the range? So it sounds like you've got obviously a bit of a slice here. Um, technical term. Yeah. David, right. So struggling with driver having to aim so far left to it. Right. First off, the more you aim left, the more it's going to fuel your swing errors and your swing faults. So it sounds like you've got a path that moves a long way to the left, cuts across the golf ball from out to in. And the more you aim left, the more you're going to fuel that outside to in path and you're going to make the slice worse. Absolutely. There's no quick fix. And it looks like there's been quite a lot of replies here. Yeah. I, I, I don't want, hopefully, Mm, yeah, it, it, it's I don't just, want people to be giving too, you know, if I was dead honest with you, and I'm going to be <laughs> deleted, <laughs> uh, dead honest with you David, go and seek help, because we'd love to give simple advice, if, if not, go and check out, I've done a video on stop hitting the golf ball right, also we've done videos on stop hitting the, stop slicing the golf ball, that's going to give you some ideas of what you're currently doing. Absolutely. Uh, final question, uh, Robin Funkmeister Beach. Now, oh. Robin, I... Please tell me that's your real name. I have my sincere <laughs> doubts that you were christened the Funkmeister. Uh, but <laughs> Mr. Funkmeister You know Beach. what? I could be wrong. Who are we to argue? Who are we to argue? So, Mr. Funkmeister, what do you think of Paul Casey's decision to not join the European Tour and thus have no chance of Ryder Cup selection. Um, I think it's odd, to be honest. I, I think with most kind of players, when you get to, you know, I'm just seeing that picture of 323 yards. You, you oh yeah, that's me. That was a while ago. Don't that's big. That was tight. That's funny. Um, yeah, that was it. Taylor made that one. That uh, Belfry one. Okay, yeah. Sorry, we're going, we're going off tangent. We're going off tangent. Casey. Uh, I, yeah, I think it's a, it's a very odd decision, just simply because to retain your European Tour card. You only need to play, I think it's six events now? Um, six so it, it's it's six standout European Tour events and then with all the WGCs and the, yeah, and that, the, and the doesn't majors. In, that doesn't include. Uh, it, it kind of matches up. So yeah, only six. But to only play in six events throughout the European Tour season. Now bear in mind the 2015-16 season has started now. But it's still only 12 months. Yeah, but it's still only 12 there's, there's so many events within that time period. To only play in six of them does not really involve a massive amount of hardship. And to say no to that and to, to say no to a chance of playing in the Ryder Cup seems very strange to me. But Casey's already kind of played in a few Ryder Cups now. He knows what it's all about. He's obviously taking the decision to stay where he's based now in the States and play just the PJ Tour event, uh, tour events and the, tour se the PJ Tour season. So, yeah, good luck to him. If that's his, if that's his decision, then it, it's, it's, yeah, it's absolutely his decision. It's, per, it's probably more personal reasons. He'll have a family. He'll have, a, he'll have a wife. He'll have loved ones that are in the states now, and that you know, time away from home is very valuable. So if if Paul Case is has needing to play in six European tour events. Just to play in a Ryder Cup, yes, just, that sounds horrible, but to play in a Ryder Cup that he has done before. And, and would he really, really, really be up for selection even if he did play all six? You know, he's playing He's playing well. He, well I think I, he's playing better now. He's concentrating his mind on PJ well, Tour. I think if he plays well, he's definitely got the chance, but it's very... It's a gamble. Yeah, I think we look at it from the perspective of a chance to play in the Ryder Cup, like for us or for anyone watching, that's obviously the stuff that dreams are made of. Now, he's already done that, he's already been there, and to him, he might have other priorities. So, whatever he decides to do, you know, it's his life, who are we to kind of comment on, but I would have thought that he could maybe, you know, maybe take the time to do that, but... Right guys, so we're going to finish off every Q&A with the stuff that we've got coming up lined up and exciting content that we're going to create for you guys, not only on our own separate channels, by the way you can subscribe to them as always, but on the Quest Golf channel as well. So we've put a schedule together, so we've put a schedule together to cover videos for every single day of the week here on the Quest Golf channel which is exciting they're going to be different types of content but very regular we're going to do it every single week so the best thing to do is subscribe to this channel and stay tuned that's really important yeah. 
it, a video is going to be coming out every single day this week to describe and explain what's going to be coming out on those certain days so that it's not going to be the main content yet but it's going to be little teasers little tiny teasers of what's what's to come to expect we filmed loads of content we're out in dubai and we we were excited to be editing this at the moment and getting it ready for you guys um and then we've got a little bit of a secret trip going on on friday which not not because of us you know we not it's not our decision but we've got to keep it hush hush yeah this this trip but follow is, us on social media and you may be able to work it out yeah this 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 trip is super secret that we can't film anything uh when we're actually over in this location for five days over is that even get over in this location <laughs> at this location is is five days where we can't kind of uh, release any content but the videos will be coming uh, early next year so it's kind of slightly out of sync um in many respects but when they actually arrive they will certainly yes. be worth it but so we also have this opportunity to film some quest golf channels while we're there as well and the monday night golf show is going to be coming live well not live but be filmed from said location we'll try and put some Dan clues in the background He's dancing dancing around this location doing a good tango around this location and then we've got we've got nothing really lined up over the winter uh, december sorry we're going to be here coaching most of the winter so guys check out our schedules on glf locker to get booked in for lessons uh, and then january we've got a couple of things coming up we're, we're back in the states uh, in orlando middle end of jam Mm -hmm. And then uh, possibly over to the waste management open. Well, well we've maybe. either got waste management open or, or, or Dubai. Dubai. So back the, at Dubai. The, so there's lots of different things again coming up. So you need to stay tuned and keep abreast of what we're going on. Because as always, our cameras are going to be there with us, and we will bring you as many videos as we physically can. Correct. And with this channel and with our channels, there are going to be so many to help you improve your game and to hopefully keep you entertained and keep you away from the X Factor Strictly Come Dancing. What? Great British Bake Off, Dancing on Ice, Coronation Street, EastEnders, Home and Away, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, neighbors, Keeping Up with the, the Kardashians, uh, The Only Way is Essex, and... Made in Chelsea. So, <laughs> it's to get me out of it. Yes, that, <laughs> that as well. As you can see, there's a lot of dross um, about, and you know what, save your brains, save your eyes, and save golf. your sanity and become better at golf and spend the time with us because we're all more than welcoming to have you and we would love to see you down here and i know rick is trying to kind of just get in here so i'm gonna keep talking uh with this kind of strange pausing voice and say thank you for watching please subscribe to the channel Follow us on all our other social media platforms as well. Okay. And we will uh, <laughs> see you down here next time. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. Why? I liked it. <laughs>